Hello, this is Jordan, and this video is being recorded on Friday, July 23rd, 2021. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope everyone had a great week, and if you're watching, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. In this video, I am going to discuss how to draw trend lines and triangles there were a couple requests to show a video of discussing how to draw trend lines. And so this will be a bit of an educational video. And at the end, I'm going to just give a brief technical outlook on gold within the context of triangles and trend lines. So I'm not a fan of trend lines. And that's because the main thing to remember with trend lines is you really need to see the market touch three times for it to be viable. But I would really say four times because if you think about it, you can connect any two points. So you automatically have two, three is only one more. So for a trend to be viable in terms of that trend line, you really need to see it touch four times. And so the problem that I see with lots of charts on the internet is people are they're not really reading the market as is. They're trying to just draw lines from various points. And um, I mean, th that to me is not the right way to do it. And so, and the reason is with respect to triangles is triangles are continuation moves. So you have a big move, there's a triangle consolidation, and then that move usually repeats itself. It's like a cup and handle pattern. So think of a triangle, and so that's when you're drawing, a, you're drawing two trend lines. You're drawing one from support, one from resistance. That's a continuation move. And so that's generally a bullish pattern. I mean, you can, in a, in a bear trend, you have bearish continuation triangles. So, and again, you really need to see if, if a triangle is not developing and you're just looking at a market and you're trying to draw trend lines, you really need to see four points connect for it to be viable, in my opinion. And I mean, one example of this is go back to gold. And you can see there, I connected the low in 2008 to the low in the end of 2015 or early 2016. And so this several years ago, this was, I mean, I saw this triangle on this chart was popping up all the time that gold was in this big triangle consolidation it was going to break one way or another and you know nothing really happened i mean it had a looked like it had a false break above it in 2017 uh then you had a, a break below it uh at the end of 2017 or early 2018 so in the reason why nothing happened is because gold was not in a triangle consolidation if you look at the bottom of the chart those are two ways you can draw triangles the right way you see that annotation on the right with the blue arrows that's the right way to draw a triangle consolidation. Um, because again, a triangle is a continuation pattern. The problem is if you look on the left, th this is what people do all the time. They just, they, they take the entire move and then they make it into a triangle. And that's what people did with gold back when the low in 2008. Whereas, you know, the correction or consolidation in gold, it began in 2011 or 2012. So when you're drawing triangles and trend lines, you know, be careful about including years in the past that are not even part of that new move. So again, you know, you really have to draw these correctly. And at the right there, that's the correct way to do it. And so, you know, and also you have to be patient uh, with how, and let these things develop. You can't force it, you know, as people were doing with this triangle, uh, this big triangle that gold was supposedly in. Uh, so you have to you have to take your time, and it was pretty clear, you know, after the the peak in 2016, 2017, it was pretty clear the real trend line was that resistance around 1375. That was there was no triangle happening in the market. That was really the clear line of resistance. Uh, so a lot of people were misreading that. Now you know here and now, I mean here here's another example. Whereas you know let's start with gold broke out of the downtrend line earlier in the spring, I mean, you can see, um, you know, there were only two points connected. And so gold broke above it 
And I remember on, you know, KE report, I was saying, yeah, it, it's not really meaningful when other people were saying it was meaningful. And that's because it, there weren't even three points there, basically. There were only two points and then, you know, gold broke above, you know, a uh, third point, which didn't really exist. So because of that, you weren't, it wasn't a meaningful breakout. You know, it would have been if gold had broken above four or five points of resistance, but it was really only two points. So it was not significant. Now, um, and you can see that since that point, you know, nothing has really happened to that line. And, you know, to you, if you look at support, I mean, you can connect um, the low in uh, early 2019. You can connect the, the low in early 2020. But again, there's really not enough points are being connected, in my opinion, for that to be significant. You're only looking at the connection of two or three points and the you know the the market itself it's it's already in a correction trend so it's not you know when the again the way you draw that it, the way you draw the whole thing it kind of looks like a triangle but there's no triangle here um so and uh, this is the last uh uh chart that i have and so you know if, if we take a step back and just try and analyze the price action of the market and look at the meaningful points before we try and draw lines. And of course, I, I mean, I drew lines here, so you can just take my word for it. That's what I did. Or I mean, I do as I analyze the market and it's clear that, you know, there's to me, there's really no important trend lines here. There's no triangle developing, at least not yet. I mean, it's, it's possible after six months or nine months, maybe there's some kind of triangle, developing but it's clear here that the real significant resistance is you have that blue line around 1900 because this is a weekly candle chart you can see how gold failed there twice the most recent rally failed there so that is the clear important level for gold you know and also you can look around 1950 you know that's also a bit of resistance but I, to me 1900 is going to be more meaningful and then on the downside um you have uh, 1675, um, where, uh, you know, that was the low before gold made uh, that move up to the peak. And then also we corrected back down. So 1675 is the low, um, you know, uh, and all, it also was the peak, uh, I think, in uh, January or February, uh, right before COVID hit. So that's going to be a key level. So, um in terms of the, in terms of, you know, the summary is in terms of trend lines, you know, before, if you're going to draw those, they're not viable unless you have four points. And if you're trying to draw a triangle, remember that a triangle is a continuation move. So you have to look at a market that's correcting when you're drawing that you can't just take the entire bullish move and then the correction and draw a triangle from that entire thing. A triangle is a continuation move. It's only from the uh, correction. So I don't mean to get, uh, you know, too, uh, too preachy here like a professor, but, uh, you know, there, there was a request for these topics, so I thought I'd do a video on it. And, I mean, that's where we see gold right now. 19, 1900 is really the key resistance level. And also, you can see it here on the weekly chart. If you look at the monthly chart and the quarterly chart, 1900 stands out. So that's going to be a significant level, at least the way we're looking at the market now. You know, maybe six or nine months later, there could be a downtrend line somewhere. And, you know, a gold breaks above those points, it might be significant. But again, it's got to be three or four points minimum for it to be significant. I mean, I just sketched out. I mean, that, that's just a potential scenario. That's not a prediction, um, but, you know, it's something to keep in mind. But basically, always focus on price first and foremost. And with the way gold is developing so far, I mean, the horizontal lines here are more significant than any trend lines. I mean, that's what I should have said a couple minutes ago. Uh, but that's what's important to remember. I hope this was educational and not a waste of your time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Follow all my work at thedailygold.com. Subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much, and I look forward to doing another video update in the days and weeks ahead.